And so once we, we got together, we did it. Dr. Velma said, you should do a devotional. And so I opened up and I started a devotional where I just opened it up for anybody who wanted to join. They don't have to be writers. They don't, you know, they right. don't have to be published. Yeah, authors. I mean, just because Somebody, you're not anybody an author who per se doesn't mean exactly. that you don't have a story to um, tell. Anybody who has a testimony. And basically what it is, is, is we all, you know, fall short. We all have things that we go through and we have that waiting season. We have that yeah. waiting room. We have that war room where we're waiting on Dr. Jesus to come and deliver us from that. Right. And so when we know that God is coming and we have that faith of a mustard seed, then we know that we will be delivered from. That. Without any further ado, I'm bringing on my next guest, Miss Jacqueline Cox. Hey, guys. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Let's get you off a of mute. All right. So as she as Jacqueline's coming off of mute, um, I just want to thank her because she has been supporting. Um, not only the Horizons Author Lounge, but also Black Authors Matter TV for um, so long. So I'm really excited about um, getting getting her on the show and talking with her about her work. And it looks like she's having a little trouble getting off of mute. <laughs> don't worry. Don't panic. Don't panic. We got you. <laughs> so um, just to tell you a little bit about um, Jacqueline. Oh, you good? <laughs> I got a girl. I got a girl. The devil okay. is a lie. He ain't going to have it today. <laughs> well, I was just about to tell the people about you, but since you're here, go ahead and tell the people about yourself. Wait, no, 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 go ahead. Go ahead. Introduce yeah. me, child. <laughs> okay. I can see that she's very humble, too. <laughs> so, um, Jacqueline, she's from Chicago. I'm, I'm sorry about the game yesterday. Don't tell me you didn't see the game yesterday. Girl, ain't nobody thinking about them bells. <laughs> I ain't no fan. <laughs> now, if they had one, I'd have been like, bear down. But now, yeah. Yeah. So I'm from Chicago. I'm a writer, uh, entrepreneur. Um, I did 12 years with uh, Department of Children and Family Services. I'm a wow. former uh, youth in care myself. Uh, uh, form a, um, a, a product of the foster care system. Mm. Um, I written this year alone, seven books, all bestsellers. Um, seven books mentor, in one year? And it's, the year's not even done year. yet. Um, <laughs> well, yeah. So I did three solo projects. Okay. And I have participated in one anthology and then I was the visionary for two more. And then I did a journal. So the wow. journal has um, affirmations as well as Bible verses. And then you can write letters to God in and it's called the Women of the Waiting Room Self-Care Positive Affirmation Journal. So yes, yeah, a total of seven. Um, and then I just launched my magazine two months ago, the Listen Linda magazine. Yeah, so, I was just know, about to say that. So you've been very up. busy. So not only do you have your books, but you um you started your magazine, Listen Linda magazine, and you have a company. Yes, I have uh, Listen Linda brand and marketing. And so I do uh, brand and marketing consulting um, and PR work for a lot of my clients. And I produce a lot of my clients' podcasts as well. So. <laughs> I use all the gifts that the Lord good God have given me. I take my oil and I, I put them in vessels and I step a, a price on it like the good girl, good girlfriend LK was saying earlier. You know, you have to be mindful of the gifts because God give you your inheritance inside of you. Yes. So if you don't use those gifts, people walk around and they say, Hey, I, I just, I just, you know, God just, he just got, he don't have you struggling, honey. He gave it to you. You got to use it. So okay. that's what I do. Well, I use you're a life coach too. Cause you're over here preaching. 
Well, you know what? I do. <laughs> Here she go. So I do. I do have my certification in life coaching and mm -hmm. I do what what is called Lin Linda Lessons. And so I do do that as well. But I, I kind of do that for more for people who just need somebody to talk to and somebody to vent to and just let it out and cry out. And then when they done, I say either you stay and you deal with it or you don't and move on, but you don't stay and cry. So I'm in complete mm -hmm. uh, sync with the lady from before, uh, Miss LK LaKendra. I'm, I'm in total agreement with everything she was saying. So, and I appreciate you for having me come on. So thank you so much. Cause you know, I've been chasing you girl. I, I got your <laughs> books. I'm a fan girl. I was fan girl. And I was like, oh yeah, girl. I got I'm gonna be on <laughs> I know my girl. No, you <laughs> yeah, I was excited when I saw that you had signed up for the show because like I said, you've been supporting for quite a while. And so I've been looking forward to this conversation. So um thank you. Thank, thank you, you. Thank you for everything. <laughs> and I'll come on, you don't see me on a lot of people's show. So you yeah. know, yeah. I be because I be so busy. It's not like I don't want to, but it's just right. like I got my own show and I be booked and I, I just have so much going on. And I, I kind of like promote things myself, but I'm kind of just trying to move out of that space and open up and let down those walls and, and kind of be able to speak the things that I write about because it's not easy to write about those things, yes. but it's really not easy when you get on platforms and actually have to speak the things that you've been through and unpack and be vulnerable visibly vulnerable so Absolutely. this is new for me so well tell us tell us about <laughs> your books because um, we're going to get to listen linda in a second but um let's talk about the books what subject matter do you enjoy writing about you know what um i do poetry i do memoir um my first book that I ever wrote was It Can't Always Be Night. Um, and this was a poetic memoir that I started writing. I have poetry in from grade five all the way through my um, early 20s. So from fifth grade to my early 20s, I took those poems and I put it in this book. And from there, I birthed my memoir. Mountains Can't Rise Without Earthquakes, which kind of speaks on what, well, does speak on what I went through um, growing up, you know, with drug addicted parents, being homeless, uh, going through um, fam familial um, incest, rape, uh, foster care system, and just everything that I went through dealing with bad relationships, you know, um, domestic violence and those type of things. So I, I really got raw in that book. And um, it's still over a year, over a year and a half, Amazon bestseller, top 100. It has not left that spot. And I think it's because I went through those things and I allowed God to uh, help me use what I went through to become, you know, to have a testimony, to be able yeah. to speak to young girls. So um, that's really my um what I feel I'm most comfortable with because just being who I am and my authentic self. Um, and from there, I started uh, my podcast right after that, which was Listen Linda. And But it was called Listen Linda, Women of the Waiting Room, where I would invite beautiful authors such as yourself uh, <laughs> to come on there um, and really uh, just be authentic. And because people will buy from you and they will support you, but they will support you more if they knew your story and the person right. behind the pen. And that, that's very true. I've said this quite a few times that there are so many readers out there who will support authors who they feel they like, who they feel they kind of know when, um, even though they may not they know you. They become family to you. Yeah, exactly. A lot of people exactly. don't read. Even the people, it's a lot of people that don't read, right? Mm -hmm. And they 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 support you like your little family and your friends yeah they'll buy your book but they won't crack it open but right. they, they just want to support you by buying it which is great yeah but, but you want people to read your story exactly, you exactly. and i think that it will and it will mostly if people can relate to you and people say jackie why do you be so transparent why do you tell this and why do you tell that 
Well, I do that because I want my audience to be my family. And if mm-hmm. I'm going to have a family and grow and expand, I have to be real with who I am and real and transparent to the people that are reading. And I try to um, instill that into every guest that comes on the show. So once I started that, that's where I came up. Well, God gave me the vision of the women of the waiting room, surgery for your soul. And so that's the anthology that I started with uh, a lot of the friends that I met in Clubhouse in this group called The Book Slam. So um, I have um, Miss Dr. Velma Bagby, Carolyn Coleman, Laquita Parks, who has published all seven of my books who become bestsellers. And then my husband and my kids books. So the family has a total of 13 books published by Paper V Publishing, all bestsellers. Um, and then it's Dr. Audrey Ann Moses, Melanie oh, Johnson, that's my girl right there, and Teresa Dorsey. Okay, you got some. You got some. Oh, I got heavy hitters. Like, oh, I got heavy hitters up in I here. See. I call them my Mount Rushmore, my <laughs> my Fab Seven. Okay, the number of completion. And I got with my girls, and I said, "Hey, we had just finished the anthology with somebody else, and they were like, I ain't doing nothing.' But when I when I <laughs> When I brought them in and I sat them down and I told them, look, God gave me this vision. I told y'all I wasn't doing another anthology either, but this is what God put in for me to do. And they were like, okay, well, we on board. 